What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more Fallout news to of course be talking about with you guys. Now, I've been doing a lot of investigating recently on, you know, what's going on with the Creation Club. I'm, I recently made a video about the Creation Club where you guys seem to be, you know, pretty happy with it. A lot of you guys are kind of interacting with me in the, uh, in the comments and, you know, some of you guys brought up something pretty interesting which i thought you know what let's make a video about this and that is actually why bethesda is not um, and you know making any more updates to fallout 4's creation club why the creation club you know just kind of died and honestly for a long time i really didn't know the reason to this but uh, a couple of you guys actually made me aware of it again and it's actually coming back to the issue that says that Bethesda was sued because the Fallout 4's inclusive season pass did not include everything. And basically what this means is, to put it into kind of a little bit of a summary, is that when Fallout 4 DLC was coming out, Bethesda actually released the season pass that said, if you bought this, you would get all the DLC that ever gets added to Fallout 4 you know, basically for free, whenever it gets added. So, of course it wasn't free because you paid for the season pass, but you guys get what I mean. Basically, you get all DLC content that ever came to Fallout 4 if you bought this season pass. But, that was the case. If you had bought, let's just say, Nuka World or Far Harbor, you got that DLC anytime if you own the expansion, you know, season pass. But then in 2017, Bethesda did something different. At E3 2017, they actually announced a new thing coming to the game called the Creation Club, where Bethesda would actually be releasing mini DLC, where they would be paying mod authors to actually make like these mods where you can buy. So you would actually, of course, be, you know, not only buying some like content for Fallout 4, but you'd also be supporting mod creators who wouldn't usually get paid. And then, of course, Bethesda made some stuff here and there and added it to the Creation Club. Now, where the issue comes in is that people who bought the season pass were not getting this content. They were not getting this content at all. In fact, they'd actually have to pay just like everyone else for this mini DLC. And Bethesda kind of quickly realized, oh no, this, like we're, we're kind of screwed here and we're probably going to get sued. In fact, a big lawsuit did come out that actually says that Bethesda and parent company Zenimax Media are facing a class action lawsuit concerning the DLC for Fallout 4, which is currently in a discovery phase. The action was launched in 2019 and revolves around the Fallout 4 season pass, which was sold before the game was released with the following promise. Quote, To reward our most loyal fans, this time we'll be offering a season pass that will get you all of the Fallout 4 DLC we ever do, for 30 bucks and of course that didn't happen now this lawsuit again like this article does say actually started in 2019 and if any evidence is coming it actually started in late 2019 because that was the last time we had an update to fallout 4 now i did actually message one of the developers on you know who works on fallout 4's creation club and i asked them about what's going on. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually find my message, but one of you guys actually messaged them pretty much the exact same thing that I said, and they actually kind of responded with, you know, we've been working on content, we've got content done, but because of COVID-related issues, is what they said, we can't actually release this content. Now, again, all oh, the content's taking some time, and they're not ready yet. Now, that's what they said. And look, that all in well might be true. COVID's been a bitch. We all know this. Uh, if you didn't know, in Australia, I'm sure you guys probably heard Joe Rogan talk about this. I'm living in Australia right now. In fact, I'm living in Victoria, which has like the harshest lockdown things. Our government thinks that like we can defeat this virus, even though it's only gotten worse since we've been in lockdown. So again, we've been in lockdown and COVID's been really bad. A lot of people have lost their jobs, you know. My heart goes out for all you guys. Um, you know, I spoke about this in another video. I actually lost one of my mates, uh, you know, in, uh, in COVID. Uh, he, he passed away. Again, I don't want to really go too much into that, but a lot of people are struggling, especially with their mental health. So, again, this is another thing. 
not only are people struggling with their mental health, but people are losing jobs. And I know there's still are some conditions in America right now where it makes it hard for people to go to work and do this and that. Developing games is, is becoming a, you know, it's a hard thing. Um, but again, that could be in all the issue. But considering this has been like confirmed that this lawsuit started in 2019, I think it's pretty evident that saying that, you know, this lawsuit that's co currently going on right now with the Creation Club, I also think that is another huge reason why the Creation Club is being held back and is not really being updated at all. I think that's a, that's a pretty obvious factor that is most likely going into this. The other thing is as well, is I don't think there's really a need for Bethesda to update the Creation Club. In fact, I believe the Creation Club was kind of... When they introduced it into Fallout 4, I believe it had two goals. Now, the first goal is, I think, is to see if they could have, like, an online store into a game where you can buy, like, microtransaction st stuff, maybe. You know, uh, with some in-game items, rather. And, of course... Because the Creation Club did actually relatively succeed, I believe that was kind of an experiment by Bethesda to see if it would work, to see if they could implement something like that into Fallout 76, which would follow like a year and a half later, where we would, you know, have an online kind of shop in there that would sell like items and clothing, skins, this and that, in the form of the Atomic Shop, is what it was called. Uh, and it is still called that, so that, that's kind of what happened there. That was experiment number one. And I think experiment number two was to see if they could remake an old slash previous location in a Fallout game and see if they could remake that location from an old Fallout game into a modern day Fallout game in terms of Fallout 4 and see if it would work in the engine. Of course, if you haven't seen this, they basically actually recreated GNR Plaza pretty much nearly from scratch, um, you know, uh, from Fallout 3, and they recreated it and sold it as, like, a thing, uh, on the Creation Club, and they added a mini story to it. I don't believe it's really canon, but, hey, it's there, and I think it's a load of fun. I believe it's called the Capital Wasteland Mercenaries Pack. It's a load of fun, and it's relatively cheap as well. Again, it was done beautifully. The GNR Plaza looked great, and the story was even better. The, the thing that this kind of regards in is because if you haven't seen this already, Bethesda actually announced that Fallout 76 would be getting a new DLC in 2022 that would be in, you know, in terms of being called The Pit. The Pit was a location in Fallout 3 DLC, uh, which was in Pittsburgh, and it'd be like this whole, it's like this whole entire Raiders kind of story. They're actually implementing this old location into Fallout 76 with a new story, and just a couple of different changes, of course, here and there. So Bethesda, of course, experimented with this in Fallout 4 because it had a similar engine to Fallout 76. And because it worked so well in Fallout 4, they kind of said, Hey, this, this experiment went really well. You know, everything we've done with the Creation Club now, we've pretty much done everything that we needed to do. And maybe now there's no point, you know, we're currently getting sued. What's the point of updating the Creation Club anymore? Let's move on to more content, and maybe even a Fallout 4 Remastered, which, hey, is still on the cards. I've got a video in the making right now. Don't know if it will be out at the time of this one, but hey, it's a thing. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's maybe how I think they went about it. So again, I think there's three things that came into it. First of all, there's the lawsuit that is currently going on right now. Second and third, there are the two experiments. Again, as I said, first experiment, can they implement an online shop into a game? That's number one. Now, second experiment, uh, can they recreate old, lo old locations in old Fallout games and put them into a modern day Fallout game in the newer engine? And all of these, all of these were success stories, except for the, uh, lawsuit. I still think they're getting sued at the time of Magnus' video. But of course, that's why the Creation Club is not getting updated anymore. Again, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for the latest Fallout content and Fallout news. Don't forget to subscribe to my sports channel, my IRO slash long channels. Don't forget to check out my podcast as well, which I will all link in the description down below. And just don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions. What do you guys think the Creation Club is not being updated? Do you guys agree with everything I said? Of course, I'd definitely really like to know. But as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>